So what really happened in Washington, D.C. on the day that Trump supporters and protesters stormed the Capitol building? I was there. I saw all of it firsthand. There is so much that the media is being dishonest about. You probably know that. But there's also another major issue here, the hypocrisy, the difference between how Black Lives Matter protesters and those protests were treated over the last seven months compared to what happened during those Capitol protests this past week. Because while those protests were very similar in a lot of ways, they're being treated like they are entirely the opposite. We're going to break down all of the myths and the lies surrounding what took place during those Capitol protests right now. I'm Ben Swan. This is Truth in Media. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Uh, so today's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to relay to you a little bit about what happened this week during my time in Washington, D.C. during those Capitol protests. I was there covering the, the, the Trump rally and the Stop the Steal rally that was taking place, and I got word that there were protesters who were storming the Capitol building, and I went there immediately, spent hours on the scene. I interviewed dozens of people who were there watching it happen, people who had been inside, people who walked out of the building carrying signs from inside the building saying they never thought we'd get in, but we got in. There's a lot that the media is saying that's untrue. You know that by now. The media can't tell the truth to save their lives. But I want to talk about this issue, the issue of the terminology that's now being used. And I think more than anything, guys, this is the single most important part of this story. Words matter. The, the way that this protest is being described deeply matters. So what is the terminology that's being used? That this was a terroristic riot, that this was an act of terrorism, that this was an insurrection. Now think about that. An insurrection is an attempt to overthrow the government. That's not what this was. According to the definition that's been used over the last few months, the last seven months, about Black Lives Matter protesters, how could we possibly call this terrorism? Keep in mind, over the last seven months, we have watched Black Lives Matter protesters burn buildings in Minneapolis, burn buildings in Kenosha, Wisconsin, burn entire car dealerships, burn down churches, burn down private businesses. We've seen it in Minneapolis as private businesses are burned down. Macy's are looted and destroyed in California and LA, all over the country. We have watched this happen night after night after night for seven months, incredible destruction of property. Now the left has told us and the news media has told us now for seven months that that this is just political protest and it's entirely and completely appropriate. In fact, what they have said over and over is that people have a right to protest and why are we so concerned about buildings? Why do we think buildings are more important than people's lives? And yet what we saw happen at the Capitol, now suddenly the media changes their minds and buildings, specifically one particular building, the Capitol building is the most sacred important building in the world. They don't care about history because Nancy Pelosi told us that she doesn't care about statues. So when BLM protesters rip down statues that are in public places, she doesn't care. But why do we care about the Capitol building now? Suddenly this old building matters that much that it becomes an act of terrorism? That's the claim that's being made. Now, I don't have to sell you guys on, on the fact that there's complete hypocrisy here. You know that. But the reason I'm bringing it up is to say that words matter. And we have to reject this idea that one set of protesters can burn down buildings and that's political speech. And on the other side, if a group of protesters breaks into the Capitol building, that's insurrection and attempt to overthrow the government and terrorism. Those two things cannot be true at the same time. They cannot be true at the same time. The reason it matters is because when words are used like terrorism and insurrection, it is an attempt to say we will further crack down on, control the speech of, control the livelihood of anyone who supports those terrorists. And please keep this in mind, since, since September 11th, 2001, we have had an apparatus in this country that has been built specifically to monitor, surveil, and destroy the life of anyone who is deemed a terrorist. So we can't just idly sit by and say, oh, who cares if the media calls Trump supporters terrorists? Who cares if the media calls people who stormed the Capitol building terrorists? Who cares? if the thousands upon hundreds of thousands of people in Washington, D.C. who didn't storm the Capitol are also labeled as terrorists. Who cares what they say? Words matter. 
So it's very important that we do not sit idly by and pretend that those words don't matter. They do. There's a reason that that terminology is being used. And there's a reason that the words that are being used are being used. Because they are weapons. Those words are weapons. Now, again, when, when we talk about all that has taken place over the last few days, I mean, there's a lot that you have to be concerned about. But the biggest thing that I think is, is concerning is the media flip that we're watching that has gone from saying, as I mentioned before, that Black Lives Matter protests are political speech to now talking this other way about these protesters. I want to show you a clip here. This was from um, a number of different news sources over the summer when there was political violence. And it was Martin Luther King Jr. who was being quoted over and over by the media who were saying that Martin Luther King Jr. said that riots are the, the, the words of those who are unheard. Listen to this. Civil rights revolutionary Martin Luther King Jr. once said, but in the final analysis, a riot is the language of the unheard. And what is it that America has failed to hear? Over 50 years later, what is America still not hearing? Martin Luther King said, riots are the, the language of the unheard. Martin Luther King said it best, a riot is the language of the unheard. They're not interested in talking about when Dr. King said that a riot is the language of the unheard. And the implication there is if we listen better to communities, and actually treat folks the way that they deserve, that we wouldn't be in these situations in the first place. Over the last seven months, the left redefined protest. They redefined protest as including rioting and the destruction of property. And the left told us, the media, corporations, politicians, they told us an appropriate form of protest is to destroy property. They justified it. They deified it. They told us that it was righteous to do so. And then when it happens, because Trump supporters and some Antifa, because the two of them were both a part of this, because they destroyed a building in DC, and they didn't destroy the building, but they damaged the building in DC, they damaged the Capitol building, suddenly the left wants to now redefine political speech again and pretend that the last seven months of saying that it was an appropriate response to injustice, that it's no longer appropriate. That now it's dangerous, it's deadly, and it cannot be tolerated. You don't get to have it both ways. Either it's appropriate political speech or it's not. But you can't pretend that it's appropriate for one group and inappropriate for another. That is what is happening right now.